Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Ahlam Al Amri from the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control uh, of Healthcare Facilities at uh, Ministry of Health. And this session will be about the uh, Domain E, uh, which is related to the Supportive Services Department and related uh, measures. And part particularly, it will be about the element number eight, um, which is about the infectious medical waste. Infectious medical waste is element um, eight, and it consists of 14 sub-elements. And for evaluating or auditing these elements, we need a specific activities for auditing, such as a D for document review or documentation, SI for staff interview, O for observation, and MR for medical record. And scoring for these uh, sub-elements will be from zero for not met uh, sub-elements, one for partially met sub-element, and finally two for the fully met sub-element. Sub-element E.8.1 state that there is a written policy and procedure for infectious waste management that covers sorting, collection, transport, storage, PPE, and etc. according to the updated national guidelines. And this sub-element will be evaluated through the document review activity. So the auditing or evaluating this sub-element, uh, which is through the activity of document review, it's need here a specific policy and procedure for management of infectious waste or biohazard waste or medical infectious waste. And this policy is supposed to be comprehensive, and that means incorporating all aspects which is related to the waste management program. So it should be describing the type of infectious waste, uh, such as um, uh, a specific yellow waste for the uh, blood uh, and body fluid, uh, such as uh, the secretion, excretion, or uh, pulp blood or blood tanked uh, fluids or uh, dressing or waste. The pathological waste, which is include the human uh, tissue, such as placenta, uh, organs, and body parts that are collected at autopsy or during the surgery in the OR. And also another type um, for the waste for the microbiological cultures that is collected in the microbiology lab or for the any uh, live uh, vaccines that we need to discard it um, according uh, to the national guideline uh, and regulations and finally uh, there is a specific category for the sharps which is um, we have a specific waste for this type of uh, sharps that required a specific uh, containers with a specific um, categories and the same document or policy uh, supposed to describing the sorting process of the infectious waste so we have um, a specific four methods of waste segregation must be followed all the time at the point of generation by the end user. And it's supposed to be described and elaborated in the policy um, effectively and clearly. So uh, we have a black box used to dispose of general hospital waste, the yellow box used to dispose of the infectious waste. And we have always referred to the national regulations in regard of the type of waste that required to be disposed in this type of bags. The red bags used to transport body parts and organs. And the, finally, the sharp containers used to dispose all used and unused sharps. The same document or, or policy is supposed to have a specific written part for the specification of the waste containers, um, such as the sharp containers. Uh, it must be written in the policy that the sharp container must be rigid, puncture-proof, and leak-proof, and closable, and should be uh, with a logo or biohazard logo that labeled as a sharp items, which um, must be printed in both Arabic and English language. And also for the plastic bag, should be tear-resistant and leak-proof, and also should be have a biohazard um, symbol or label with uh, the word infectious both in Arabic and English, or according to the color of these wastes.
in the same policy is supposed to have a, a clear part about the a specific instruction required for, uh, for collection of the infectious waste. For example, the frequency or the timing of collection of the infectious waste. Um, in some facilities, uh, they have written in the policy at least once per day or at least once per shift and so on. So we have um, to have a clear statement about the frequency of collection of these, um, of these infectious waste. And also the type of PPE required that uh, must be worn by the uh, healthcare workers who is collecting these infectious uh, waste. And, uh, and we have have a clear instructions related to the um, collection process or, or procedure of the infectious waste, such as handling a bag at the top so the bag do not come into contact with your body, do not use a hand to compress or squeeze the waste in containers, and we have to tie all bags securely when it's the third, fourth fall and remove the storage containers and avoid overfilling cars with, uh, with waste uh, bags for transport to the general storage room. Another part that must be uh, clear written in the policy of the infectious waste, the transportation of these infectious waste. So we have uh, to have a specific instruction or, or statement written in the policy regarding the criteria of transportation. So the internal and external system used for transportation of infectious waste must maintain integrity of packaging and protect handlers. And we have to use a leak-proof carts that are rapidly cleanable to transport the infectious waste from the point of generation or storage to the point of disposal and treatment. And we need always to decontaminate the carts used for transporting waste within the hospital daily using a hospital approved disinfectant solution. And all these instructions must be written in the policy of the medical waste or infectious medical waste. In the same document or policy, we have to have a specific part related to the storage of these infectious waste. So we have two types of storage in the hospital. And uh, this type, it's, um, according to them, the, the time period required for storing these infectious waste. So this type is supposed to be the temporary storage and central storage, and it should be clearly documented and stated in the same policy. Sub-element E.8.2 uh, states that all non-sharp generated medical waste is disposed in black bags um, as a general waste, except that heavily soiled with liquid blood or other body fluid dripping should be considered as infectious medical waste and discarded in the yellow bag or based on the National Medical Waste Updated Guideline and Regulation. And this type of um, sub-elements required a two activity for auditing, observation and staff interview. So in any uh, medical area, when you are doing the auditing for the observation activity, we need to check if that the patient care area, such as in the ER, ICU, or hemodialysis unit, have the available of different sizes of color-coded waste bags. And also we have to check the plaque bag for disposing or medical waste not heavily soiled. And also in the yellow bag supposed to be there is a waste there inside these bags that's heavily soiled with liquid blood and according uh, to the uh, national regulations. And if the number of the waste receptacles are adequate according to the amount of waste generated in the specific unit, and also we have to check the availability of color-coded bags and sharp containers and that um, supposed to be meeting the, um, the specification and regulation um, of the Ministry of Health uh, regulations um, uh, of these type of uh, containers. For the same uh, sub-element that required the auditing through the staff interview activity, we need to interview with the staff and ask them uh, during the auditing visit in different patient care areas to uh, assess or evaluate the sub-element. So, for example, we can ask them about the uh, protocols of the waste management or the policy, the internal policy that constructed um, uh, for this uh, topic, which is about the infectious waste management. And we can ask them about the last training and education received from the, uh, uh, from the infection prevention and control department in regard to infectious waste management. And we can give them a specific scenarios in regard of the, uh, the medical waste management. And we can obtain from their answers if the policy is implemented effectively. 
Sub-element E.8.3 state that disposal of waste from the isolation room is done properly based on the patient's diagnosis as general waste or medical waste according to the updated national medical waste regulation. And this type of the sub-elements require the observation for, uh, for evaluation. So uh, observation for this sub-element uh, for evaluating this specific statement uh, uh, through the observing the collected medical waste from the occupied isolation rooms. So waste should be segregated in yellow bags or in black bags. Uh, based on the latest updated uh, guideline or regulation of the waste management that generated from the Ministry of Health. And we can um, check if the patient is under, um, under contact isolation for the MDRO organism. So we need to check if all waste um, uh, disposed in the black bag um, except dressing uh, from the infected or surgical wound and the items heavily soiled with blood or other. Uh, body fluids and uh, and so on we can make uh, and check the other um, or observe the other waste if they are uh, following the same regulation of the uh, ministry of health and of the internal policy that constructed by the infection prevention and control department in the same facility sub-element e.8.4 state that in general words all clinical procedures are performed using procedural trolley equipped with biohazard waste bag and sharp container. And for this sub-element, we are using the observation and staff interview activity. So for auditing uh, of this sub-element, we need the observation activity so we can uh, observe during the visit uh, in the general ward, uh, such as the medical ward or surgical ward or the maternity wards, if they are using the procedure at Trolley for performing all bedside clinical procedure like wound dressing, uh, IV cannulation, and etc. And we can observe the availability of sharp container and biohazard waste bag within the same Trolley uh, that uh, with appropriate size hanging with the procedure at Trolley. For the staff interview activity of this sub-element, we need to interview and ask the staff engineer wards regarding their practice in terms of uh, waste management and waste disposal. And we have to ask if they are using a procedure trolley equipped with a sharp container and biohazard bag uh, for discarding waste and sharp. And we can give them a scenarios during the visit, um, for example, to ask them and observe and um, observe and monitor their answers in regard of this uh, implementation of this uh, particular policy. Sub-element E.8.5 state that sharp containers are well mounted or placed on the stand and available inside the patient's zoom. And this type of sub-element requires two types of activities for auditing, observation and staff interview. Auditing of this sub-element by the observation activity can be conducted during our auditing visit round in the area, such as critical care area in the ER or ICU. And, or in the isolation rooms. And we can um, observe the location of the sharp containers and it should be wall mounted or placed on stand. And uh, according to that, we can observe if the height of sharp container is meeting the international um, uh, criteria required for the, uh, for the location uh, of this type of the containers. And sometimes we can observe sharp containers placed directly on floor or mounted very high above the eye level and at the locations that are inaccessible for the healthcare workers. And all these observations, from these observations, you can uh, evaluate or audit this sub-element. Sub to understand or, or audit this um, uh, sub-element, we need to refer to the ICA guideline 2023 to identify uh, uh, the required height of the sharp container location. And uh, the National Institute of the Occupational Safety and, and Health, NIOSH, provide us an ideal formula to, uh, by establishing the eye level height. So maximum thumb tip reach of the worker population and including a drop angle, drop uh, 15 degrees. And uh, from this uh, formula, the sharp disposal container height is supposed to be in the standing workstation from 52 to 56 inches above the standing surfaces of the user and in the seated workstation supposed to be from 38 to 42 inches above the floor in which the chair rests.
sub element E.8.6 state that no pin proking or recap needles are observed inside the sharp containers. And this sub element is uh, audited or evaluated through observation and staff interview activity. So for auditing or evaluating this sub element, we need to observe during our auditing visit in the patient care areas, uh, such as in the general ward or critical care units. So we can open the lid of sharp containers at random and check if any poking, print, or recapped or separated needles are present. Or we can observe the healthcare workers um, uh, practices during uh, their procedures when they are providing any care to the patient. And we can audit or evaluate uh, this sub-element through the staff interview. We can ask the staff about the safe handling of sharps. And we can uh, ask them uh, to simulate how to discard the used syringe after use. And we can give them a scenarios of them uh, poking a glass uh, that is already on the floor and uh, monitor how uh, they are uh, dealing with these uh, sharps uh, and disposing them safely. Sub element E.8.7 state that no infectious medical waste or sharps are observed outside specified containers. And this sub element evaluated through the observation activity. So, evaluating this sub element through the observation activity can be during the uh, auditing visit inside the hospital or healthcare facility to the patient care area, such as in the general wards or the dental uh, or the lab uh, department or the critical care unit. And we can observe if the healthcare workers are discarding the waste in the specified container or not, and randomly open the containers to observe if the discarded waste is appropriate for that receptacle based on the internal policy that is constructed based on the national uh, MOH um, regulations and uh, guidelines. Sub element E.8.8 uh, state that medical waste bags are collected after being securely closed when filled to a third fourth of its maximum capacity and labeled with the date and place of production. And this sub element is uh, evaluated through the observation and staff interview activities. So the activity for, for evaluating or auditing this sub element required the observation as a one activity. So uh, we have to observe the medical waste bags in the temporary holding area uh, in the department and infectious waste room, which shouldn't be overfilled uh, to fulfill this uh, sub-element. And if the waste bags um, are well secured and tied with a self-locked plastic tie before placing them in the temporary holding area, such as uh, in the dirt utility room. We have to observe also the label of the infectious waste bags with the following information, the generating department, day collect, date collected, and the time, and etc. So to evaluate this sub-element, you, you need to have a method of the interview. So you can interview uh, with the housekeeping or waste collection staff about the procedure and mechanism of waste collection. And also you can ask them at which level, the capacity level, are they going to remove a waste bag from the specified receptacles or containers. And uh, according to their answer, you can uh, put the scoring for this uh, sub-element. And we can ask them if they have a tax or sticker for labeling uh, the waste bags and what is the necessary information that needs to be recorded. For example, the date, department, and unit. And also another question can be asked for this particular um, uh, sub-element that we can ask them um, what they are using to tie the waste bags at the time of collection. Sub-element E.8.9, sharp boxes are collected after being securely closed when filled to third-fourth of its maximum capacity and labeled with the date and place of production. And this sub-element is evaluated through observation and staff interview activity. So the observation method for, the, for evaluating of this sub-element required uh, for observing any sharp containers in the temporary holding area infectious waste room and assess the levels. And if the sharp containers are being replaced promptly when container is third, fourth, filled um, and reach the fill line. We have also to observe the label on the sharp container with the following information, a generating department, a date collected and also the time and etc. So we have to interview with the nursing staff about the responsibility regarding the sharp containers at which level or capacity level um, are they going to close it, the sharp containers uh, 
uh, if they saw any um, the level for fulfillment. And, uh, and so the nurses at this level, they are responsible to close the sharp containers when it's third, fourth full, or reach the full line, and to inform the medical waste staff um, immediately to replace it. And also we can ask uh, if they have a tax or sticker for labeling the sharp containers, and what is the necessary information that needs to be recorded, date, department, and unit, etc. The waste collection staff also, we can ask them or interviewing them uh, to evaluate this sub-element uh, about the procedure or mechanism of collection of the sharp containers. Sub-element E.8.10, collection and transportation of medical waste are done by medical waste workers wearing a proper PPE at fixed time and on demand. And this sub-element is evaluated through document review, observation, and staff interview. So for evaluating or auditing this uh, sub-element, we need to review the document. And the document, we have um, different um, uh, methods to check the, the implementation of this sub-element. So by reviewing the schedule of waste collection within the units and verify the frequency of waste collection. And as we all know that the frequency of waste should be clearly specified in the schedule or the log sheet. So uh, sometimes they are putting a fixed interval every two hours, once per shift, or once per day. And any evidence of collection protocols, such as the contact number to call the medical waste staff when needed in case of the increased demand, uh, supposed to be there is documents there, and, um, and we can review it to evaluate this sub-element. Also, another activity used to evaluating or auditing this sub-element through the observation. So we can observe in the temporary holding areas, dirt utility rooms, if collection frequency is matching with the, what is specified in the schedule. And you may observe the large number of waste bags and sharp containers not collected as a bare schedule. And this is, it will give us um, a hint in regarding the implementation of this sub-element. As uh, so the practice of waste collection staff waste regarding using appropriate PPE and hand hygiene. We can um, observe them and we can, according to that, um, evaluate this uh, sub-element. Observe uh, the, that waste collection staff to use on set of PPE. So uh, during the hospital round, we can observe some um, healthcare workers in the medical waste. They are um, donning and doffing PPE. And based on that, we can evaluate and audit the same sub-element. Uh, also, we can use the method of interview uh, by asking the healthcare workers about uh, the implementation of this sub element. So, we can interview waste collection staff about the frequency of waste collection from different units and where they are keep the waste uh, for how long it stays. And based on that, we can give a scoring for that sub element. Ask about the appropriate PBE and frequency of changing these PBE. Ask them to uh, at random to simulate the PBE toning and dumping and assess their performance. And also, we can ask if they have received any infection control training and at which date. Sub-element E.8.11 uh, state that infectious medical waste is transported in closed and impervious specified carts with biohazard sign. And carts are cleaned after each use or at least daily. And this sub-element is evaluated through observation and staff interview activities. So to evaluate or audit this sub-element, you need to observe the availability of carts used for transportation of infectious medical waste and assess if they are meeting uh, that specification. So it's supposed to be closed, impervious, leak-proof, and readily cleanable, clearly visible biohazard signage attached to this uh, cart. And we have also to observe, observe if the transportation carts are regularly cleaned and well maintained free from dust and blood stains. When waiting or auditing this sub-element, we need to interview with the healthcare workers to identify the implementation of this sub-element. So we need to interview with the waste collection staff about the frequency of cleaning of the transportation carts. And also we can um, ask them about the where and how carts are being cleaned and what, which disinfectant that they are using for the disinfection and cleaning of the carts. So uh, as we all know, the transportation cards used for transporting waste within the hospital must be decontaminated and disinfected after each use or daily um, using a hospital-approved disinfectant solution. Sub-element E.8.12 uh, state that the medical waste store is consistent with the approved national specifications 
adequate in space away from traffic and secured and well ventilated uh, with control temperature and this uh, sub element uh, auditing required uh, document review observation and staff interview so for auditing or evaluating this sub element we need to review a specific document so we can review the logs for temperature controls check for any uh, we have to check for any fluctuations in the log sheet and also we can check the cleaning schedule or checklist Another method for evaluating or think this um, the implementation of this implement through the observation. So we can observe the medical waste store if it's fulfilling the following specification. Uh, it's supposed to be secured and locked away from traffic, biohazard sign uh, posted, adequate space, clean and well maintained and well ventilated. And also the room must have a smooth floor and door well sealed to protect it from the water leakage and also it should be equipped with hand hygiene or hand washing sink that required um, for the hand implementation of the effective hand um, hygiene. Uh, for um, evaluating or think this sub element we need to have interview with the staff. So interview with the responsible staff about the engineering controls of waste forms with uh, what would be the actions taken in case of the fluctuation or failure and we have also to interview with them in regard of the frequency of cleaning and disinfection of the room and type of disinfectant used. Sub element E.8.13 state that infectious medical waste is transported outside the hospital every 24 hours for a final disposal. And the method for evaluating this sub element through the document review, observation, and staff interview. Review the document uh, can be through the daily, daily collection log sheet or any document provided by the company for the transportation and waste disposal outside the hospital with date and time. Infectious medical waste is transported outside the hospital every 24 hours. And also we can uh, evaluate or uh, audit this um, sub-element through the observation. We can observe the check the label on medical waste bags and sharp containers to confirm if exceeded 24 hours collection time or as a bare standard. And also observe the number of available waste bags and assess if it's matching with the policy of daily collection. A huge number would reflect the lack of compliance. We can also audit this sub element through the interview with healthcare workers and to score this sub element. So responsible staff regarding frequency of waste collection by the designated waste management company. And also we can interview an app on which day and time company is collecting waste for the purpose of verification. Sub element E.8.14 state that medical waste workers are vaccinated against blood upon pathogens and trained on hand hygiene and use of PPE, appropriate steps required post exposure to sharp or blood or body fluids, and safe handling of waste. And this sub element is evaluated through document and uh, medical record and staff interview. So evaluating this sub-element can be through the review of documents. So evidence of training conducted for infectious waste workers, so we have to check for frequency and review the content of training provided for them. The training activities um, include, but not limited to the hand hygiene, PPE, including the respirator, safe handling and other waste management protocol during collection transportation, labeling, coding, sharp injury and post-exposure protocols and cleaning and disinfection activities. Also, another uh, review of documents can be um, uh, support the scoring of this sub-element through the reviewing the medical records of infectious waste, uh, medical waste uh, workers and check if they have received vaccination against um, a blood-borne pathogen such as hepatitis B. And we can review the files in the unit of copies in the employee health clinic. We can verify if they have completed the required uh, dosing schedule. And uh, from the method of the interviewing to, um, to uh, check the applicability and implementation of the sub-element can be through the interview and uh, with the infectious waste, um, uh, medical waste workers regarding the vaccination against hepatitis, we can ask them. And also we can ask them if they have received any prior training from infection control department. And also we can ask them to simulate in hand hygiene and PBE zoning and dumping sequences. 
Thank you for attending this session and listening to this uh, presentation. And if you have any further questions, do not hesitate to contact us at any time through the auditing program email or through the phone call or WhatsApp. Or you can contact directly your um, ICA coordinator uh, at your region uh, for any further support or inquiry. And always be uh, proud that you are ICA auditor and always you are representing the GDIBC for this um, journey of auditing visits.